is going on everybody welcome back to RC Car Garage and today we are back with the TRX 4M Bronco so if you guys saw my last video I'll put a link over here somewhere so you guys can check that out I went through how to install the low range gears on the TRX 4M I also went through how to install the light kit on the body what I also showed you guys in the last video was some upgrades that we're going to be doing to the TRX-4M. So in that last video with the crawling gears, I didn't do anything with the ECM. I literally just installed the low range gears. But this time when I go to take it out, I am going to set up the ECM for crawling. So we're going to have the crawling and the crawling gears. And we're also going to have a whole bunch of brass, like I told you guys. So here we have some Endura brass covers. Some more Endura brass. <laughs> and the Endura steering link. I also got... Some trail extended hubs and we got some Endura brass wheels look how nice they look they look nice I like it so what I'm basically gonna do right now is weigh everything to see what it weighs so we're gonna start off with the wheels and I want everything in grams. So just one wheel alone right here, we are looking at 45 grams. Let me, let me show you guys. So just this wheel alone, whoa, 45 grams, just that one wheel. So the whole front end of the Bronco, just the weight alone for the front is going to come out to 100 72.8 grams with all of this that's going to be on the front now I do have one wheel already mounted the issue that I'm having with the stock tire on the Endura wheel is that I can't fit the ring on the screws right in there that hold the wheel together that sandwich the tire on with the ring it's not going to work so what I'm going to do is for the time being I'm going to use these wheels without the ring and see how that works and then what I'm also going to do is order new tires for these and put that tire back on the stock wheel all right, you guys, so here it is with all the brass installed onto it, the wheels. I had to get new tires because unfortunately, Traxxas tires would not fit onto these wheels with the ring. They'd work if I took the ring out, but that would defeat the purpose of the whole brass wheels, just all the weight. But it's all on here. Uh, I think this thing looks absolutely great. I love, I love the way this thing looks right now. The wheels with the Area 51 color, I think this thing just looks absolutely awesome. I think it looks awesome. I love the way this thing looks right now. So let me show you guys how this thing looks. So let me show you guys everything I put on here. So. On the front, we have the Endura brass steering link, Endura. I went with the Endura hubs, covers, the Endura, actually those are Trio uh, wheel spacer, wheel head hub, hex extenders. I went with Endura 1.0 wheels and Endura tires on here. And these wheels, they are brass wheels, all brass. And I'll tell you guys what I think 
that these wheels just look absolutely gorgeous on this Bronco. I love the way this thing looks. So the hub extenders actually pull the wheels out further on the Bronco. And guys, look at that stance. That's how much further out the wheels stick out from the body. Here's the back end, how much further it sticks out. And I think it looks great. I think this looks absolutely awesome the way that it's sitting right now. So with all this brass that I have on here, which is still not all of it, just for the main fact that I am still waiting on the lower links. I think they're the high clearance links that I ended up ordering for this guy. So I'm still, and they're brass, so I'm still waiting on those to come in to be able to put this, put them on and really see how much more weight is gonna get added onto here. My one thing that I am wondering, because I've been seeing it a lot, is how is the servo or the motor going to hold up with all the brass that's on here? We will have to find out. If the servo does burn out, I think we'll be okay. I was uh, watching, I think it's a uh, 2FM, 2FMRC the other day, and he was actually talking about, he actually installed an Endura mini servo on here. And apparently he loves it. It was working great for him. He has it on, I think, two or three other rigs that he has. And he says they were working great. So I might end up going up that route. If not, there are other micro servos that I will be able to install on here. My biggest thing is wanting to see what is going to go first. Is the servo going to go first or is the motor going to go first? Or are they both going to go out at the same time because of all the wicks, because of all the extra weight that I have on there? We're going to find out. Now we all know that the Bronco, the TRS4M Bronco has a perfect, perfect, and it's all online. You guys will be able to see it. There's people that have weighed it. But this thing has a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. 50 in the front, 50 in the back. Perfect weight distribution, front to back. So now there's actually more weight on the front of it because as I'm picking it up, <laughs> as I go to pick it up here by the doors, you can see that the front just comes right down. I have to pick it up more in the front just to, there we go. That, that, see, that's not even a 50 weight. So right here, that thing just lowers all the way. The whole front end just dips. I have more weight in the front now. So is the servo going to hold up with all this weight? We're gonna find out. All right, you guys, so we're out here. We're gonna test out the K5 Blazer FCX24 and the TRX4M Bronco and we're both we're gonna see how they are both gonna perform with everything that it's got on it. So let's go. Clicking the front end. Okay, my front end is going. Keep going.
All right, you guys. So I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I think my front end is gone. Listen to this. Hear it right there? All right, you guys, so we are back in the office and that run did not go exactly the way I was expecting it to go. Had to cut it a little short, as you guys could tell. But what I think happened is the fact that when I put the hub extenders on the axles here, it pushed the wheels out further. So what I think happened when I was at full turn, it was just binding up on the body and here on the front bumper and uh as sticky as these endura tires are which i love these tires they are great as sticky as these tires are i think it caused the front end diff to go so what i'm gonna do is i did end up ordering metal diff gears front and rear from endura I also got some 59 millimeter shocks that we're gonna be putting on this guy. Give this guy a little bit of a lift. And they finally got here the high clearance links. Finally arrived. We're gonna be throwing these on to this guy now. And then we'll take it out in another video and see how this guy performs. So without further ado, I'm going to start taking this guy apart and start adding some of these uh, parts on there. First thing I'm gonna tackle is the gears, the diff gears. So let me go ahead and start doing that. So the first thing you guys are gonna to have to do when you go to change the gears in your diff is re remove the lower links. So to remove the lower links, you got a screw here and you got a screw on the other side that you're gonna remove. The link should just come up. Uh, the next thing you're gonna have to do is remove the screws that are holding the upper links and your screws for the top of the strut of the shocks and the whole front end should come off. There you go, your whole front end is now loose. Um, you could go ahead, you could go ahead and cut this zip tie and remove the wiring for the servo. All right, so now that you got the whole front end taken off, you have four screws on your diff cover on the back side of it. You're gonna remove those four screws So you have four screws on your diff cover. Focus, focus, focus. You can see one here, one there, another one here, and another one up there. You're gonna to wanna to remove those four so you can get to your differential gears. Once you remove those four gears from the back, your front diff cover should just pop right off. All right, so I ended up so I ended up removing my front steering link so I could just work on this by itself and move the chassis out to the side. So these gears are definitely shot and this in here is completely bone dry. There's no grease in here at all. So what you're gonna wanna do is now remove all of your, the C-hubs, all this part, all this from the outside, you're gonna wanna remove all of that. Now with the drive shafts, now with those shafts both taken out, you should be able to just pull this guy on out. And here is what this guy looks like. Just 
That's not good. So let's see what this other one here looks like. Now you gotta remove the drive shaft. So as you guys can see, this gear it looks fine. This gear looks absolutely fine. So the only one that failed was this gear here. As you guys can see, it's flat there. And it started to go flat right there. So, we got new gears. Here we go. So these gears, as you guys can hear them, they are metal. They're helical gears, so this is gonna work out pretty dang nicely in the Bronco. So let's go ahead and put these gears back into the casing and grease this guy up. So you got them all nicely greased up now. You get your front cover. After you put your cover back on, you put your screws holding the diff cover. All right, so when you go to tighten up those screws for the diff cover, you do not want to over tighten them because this is plastic and it will strip. So let's put the shafts back into place. There you go, so now the front diffs are in. So while we're here, I'm gonna start removing the uppers and the lower lengths, and I'm gonna change the suspension. So in order to remove the upper lengths, you're gonna remove the screw that is holding the servo carrier. So you remove that long. So you remove that long screw, and your links will just pop out like so. You don't even have to remove the servo tray. So now you're going to want to grab the new links, and if your links has lettering on it, like this one, like these do. You're gonna to wanna to be conscious of conscious of where the lettering goes so they're not facing inward. You could probably put them inward, but more than likely you're gonna want them to be facing out. So we'll go ahead and put that one in there. This one in here. And feed the screw through and start tightening it up. Again, you do not again you do not want to over tighten these screws because this is all plastic and that will strip. So now that you got those put on, you're gonna to want to grab the lower links and start by removing the screws that hold 
the shocks and the lower link together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the shocks here. These are the Endura 59 millimeter shocks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add some oil into this. It has a tiny, tiny little bit, but I'm gonna add some oil into this so we can uh, get this thing working right. All right, you guys, so here we have it. We got the both shocks mounted on front. We got the upper links, we got the lower links, we got the drive shaft back on so before you put this before you put this back on the rig what you're going to want to do is turn your drive shaft a couple times just to make sure that everything is going good and that you don't have any binding up nothing is binding up so we are good to go all right, you guys, so I did add oil, shock oil. I added 35 weight shock oil to the shocks. They had a little tiny bit just to keep everything like oiled up in there. Um, but you're gonna wanna add oil to these shocks. The other thing with the shocks is that it also brings, it also brings different springs. So it seems, to me that these springs are a little thicker of a gauge spring compared to the stock one that comes on the spring. So you can definitely see the difference in color. These are a lighter spring compared to this one. So I did end up throwing those onto the shocks because of the hard body of the TRX-4M. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to show how to do the rear drive and the shocks because basically you do the fronts, which are a little tougher actually because you have the steering components that you got to deal with. But you do the rear and uh, it's a lot easier because you don't have the steering to deal with. So. I'm going to go ahead, get everything done on here, and I'll get back with you guys once all the links and the shocks are all done and set up on the chassis. So I'll be right back. Let me get going on this. All right, you guys, so here it is completely done. And as you can see, it is sitting up higher with the new 59 millimeter suspension that I put on here. And I think it looks absolutely awesome. The one different thing that I changed on this was I actually took off the trio hub weights. It was pushing out the wheels too much and I believe that was the culprit of why the gears for the front diff ended up stripping because every time that I would turn it and the suspension would come up, it would just bind all the way up. I believe that is the reason why the front gears ended up stripping on the front diff. So this is done with all the links. I have the bottom links, I have the upper links installed, the rear, uh, rear diff gears are installed, the front diff gears are installed. So this guy is ready to go. I did use 35 weight oil all around in the shocks and I think it looks great. I changed the suspension to the stiffer springs that come, these are the original softer springs that come with the shocks, but I changed them to the harder springs in the rear. I'm gonna add some preload in the back of it because I kinda don't want it to sag a little bit. It's sagging if you guys can see it. Here, let me turn this light on here. There we go. So if you guys can see, it is sagging a little bit. So I'm gonna add some preload to the rear shocks. The front, I think, looks fine. I think it looks fine, the way it sits with the higher clearance now. So let's see how this guy is going to do, but that's gonna be in another video. 
So in the next video, we are gonna be comparing the FCX24 K5 Blazer to the TRX4M Bronco to see how they're gonna be do how they're gonna do against each other. So you guys stay tuned. If you haven't yet, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Y'all have a good one and you keep our seeing.